टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज अबाउट द मसल ब्लड फ्लो एंड कार्डिक आउटपुट ड्यूरिंग एक्सरसाइज कोरोनरी सर्कुलेशन एंड इस्कीमिक हार्ट डिजीज सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अवर न्यू चैप्टर एंड द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इन अवर न्यू चैप्टर इज गोइंग टू बी अवर ब्लड फ्लो इन स्केलेटल मसल्स एंड द ब्लड फ्लो इन स्केलेटल मसल्स ड्यूरिंग एक्सरसाइज नो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ सिंपल एंड ईजी टॉपिक and it just shows that the what is the amount of blood that is flowing to the skeletal muscles normally and what is the amount of blood that flows to the skeletal muscles during exercise now this graph simply shows that normally normally the amount of blood that flows to the heart uh, sorry to the skeletal muscles is around 3 to 4 ml per minute per 100 grams of skeletal muscles the amount of blood that flows to the skeletal muscles normally is around 3 to 4 ml 3 to 4 ml per minute per 100 grams of skeletal muscle mass now this is normally if suppose for example we see that this on the x axis we are showing time and on the y axis we are showing the amount of blood that is flowing to the muscles now this is normal blood flow here we have the normal blood flow which is in this range 3 to 5 4 or 5 uh, ml per minute per 100 grams of muscle now what happens during exercise what happens to the blood flow in skeletal muscles during exercise now as soon as a person starts exercising the amount of blood flow the amount of blood flow in the muscles may increase up to may increase up to up to 80 ml up to 80 ml maybe in some people around 50 or 60 or 70 but it may increase up to 80 ml per minute per 100 grams of skeletal muscles so normally the amount of blood flowing to the skeletal muscles is around 3 to 5 ml per minute per 100 g of muscle but in the exercise especially in strenuous exercise depending upon uh, the the uh, the build of the person depending upon whether a person is athlete or a normal person the amount of blood flow to the skeletal muscles may increase to around 50 60 or up to 80 ml per minute per 100 g or it may increase around 15 to 25 times 15 to 25 times of the normal blood flow now here in this graph we see that the blood flow during exercise it is basically increasing and decreasing it is increasing and decreasing it is increasing and decreasing and when the exercise is finished for example at this point between this point and this point we are exercising and at this point the exercise we stop exercising now the blood flow returns to the normal but this increase and decrease it is due to the fact that the mus the blood vessels the blood vessels that are supplying blood to the muscles suppose for example this is the blood vessel it has its branches inside the muscle now these blood vessels they get they get contracted during the contraction they get compressed they get compressed during contraction of the muscle during exercise when muscles are being used the muscles get contracted and they get relaxed they contract and relax contract and relax when they contract due to contraction the the blood vessels they get compressed and blood is not able to move forward so the the blood flow in the muscles it decreases but as soon as the contraction disappears and the muscles relax so the 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 compression the compression of the blood vessels also goes away and the blood is now able to move into the muscle so the blood in, uh, flow increases once again so normally the amount of blood flow to the muscles is around 3 to 5 ml per per minute per 100 g of muscles 
In strenuous exercise, it may increase around 50 to 80 ml per minute per 100 gram of muscle depending upon person to person like some in some people it may increase up to 50 ml per minute and in some people like in athletes or the people who exercise regularly or who have uh, built their muscles it may increase up to around 80 ml per minute per 100 gram of muscle and during exercise the blood flow the, to the muscles it increases and decreases it increases between contraction it increases between contraction during contraction it comes down during contraction it comes down because the blood vessels inside the muscles they get compressed from the outside due to contraction of the muscles so the blood flow decreases during contraction of the muscle and it increases during relaxation of the muscles during exercise during exercise another important uh, thing is that one of the most important factor for the increase in the blood flow to the muscles during exercise is that there are a lot of capillaries there are a lot of capillaries or blood vessels which are normally closed which are normally closed but is the demand of the muscle increases the demand for nutrients or the oxygen or other substances increases during exercise so these blood vessels these blood vessels also get opened they also get opened so this lead to an increase in the surface area through which transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide can occur and it also lead to an increase in the blood flow to the exercise so the the, the increase blood flow to the skeletal muscles during exercise is due to a lot of factors there are a lot of factors but one of the most important factor that leads to increase in the blood flow during exercise is the opening of the closed blood vessels especially the capillaries so the normal blood flow to the skeletal muscles is around 3 to 5 ml per minute uh, per 100 gram of muscle and during exercise it may increase around to around 50 to 80 ml per minute per 100 grams and that increase in blood flow uh, is basically uh, more in the relaxation of the muscle than in the contraction because during contraction the blood flow decreases because the blood vessels compresses and the most important reason for the increased blood flow during exercise is opening of the closed vessels so normally if only few capillaries are open and during exercise all of the closed capillaries get opened so it leads to an increase in the blood flow to the muscle uh, skeletal muscles during exercise so that's uh, the introductory topic to the uh, of the blood flow in the skeletal muscles and then we are going to discuss the regulation of blood flow in skeletal muscles